Welcome to Snetterton for rounds three and four of the Marangoni Gas Shocks Compact Cup with the racing here today taking place on the full 300 circuit. But before we get down to business, Matt Suckling has been catching up with some of the drivers taking part. Mark Gazard racing in the uh, BMW Compact Cup. First of all, Gas Shocks sponsoring the series once again. Right, yep. Tell us a little bit about the Gaz. Well, it's uh, a company we started up about 13 years ago. Um, we used to make a lot of damper components for other companies and just thought, well, you know, we're making them for everybody else, why not make them ourselves? And it's really just gone from strength to strength. And the club racing scene is what we're really big in. And we support a lot of races, as well as the Boxsters, the Lotuses, the Mazdas, the Minis, and it's just gone from strength to strength. And it's a great series to get involved with because, as we can see, massive grids all, all the way down the field. Oh, unbelievable. I mean, Paul came to us you know, a couple of years ago with just the concept and a drawing. And straight away, we just said, well, how much do you want? We put a check down and we support you all the way and never look back since. You've had two races so far at Brands Hatch. Did they go to plan for you? Yeah, not too bad. I mean, I got a six in the first race and uh, an eighth in the, in the second race. For me, that's great. You know, I'm moving up the grid and it's where I want to be. And we've got Warren as well, who is your brother. Uh, so there must be a little bit of uh, sibling rivalry going on here. No, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> we, we always seem to qualify next to each other within tenths of a second. I don't know why, we just do. But that's the way it is. So it's good. So who's got the upper hand here at Snedden? Uh Well, the time shoots have just come out and I think I'm... Um, oh, I'm fifth. Oh, I'm fifth and uh, I think Mark's seventh. So not a lot in it. So it'll be interesting on the start. Mark always gets a better start than me. Uh, I just seem to spin on the line, so I've got to try and sort that out. But hopefully get a good start, keep him fifth, just keep looking at my mirrors. Who knows? And what's the BMW like to drive for you compared to other things you've uh, driven in? Yeah, great. Um, I've done production BMW, which is also a fantastic championship. Uh, Masters, which is again is great. Um, I think out of three, I do prefer the compacts. Um, a lovely car. Getting them right, once you've hit that sweet spot and you're happy with the car, makes all the difference. And I think we're finally getting there. Please. Uh, well, all the best for the weekend and we'll see which one of you comes out on top. Lovely, thank you very much. Now, Farad, you took part in your first year of racing last year. You're now into your second year. How's it kind of gone for the, the beginning of the 2013? Uh, really well actually, quite happy with the way things are going at the moment. Uh, the beginning of the season always has areas that you can be improved, uh, namely the fleshy bit behind the wheel. So uh, hopefully this year should be good. I finished 10th last year and that was my first year racing so I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. I would be very, very happy if the same thing happened uh, this year but we'll see. Now you're in the armed forces, how does that kind of tie in with your motor racing? Uh, well. Army Motorsport uh, is, is, is uh, up and running uh, and uh, the circuit racing, sports car racing part of that has been going for about two years now. Uh, the Army Motorsport has uh, something called the Armed Forces Race Challenge which is for basically soldiers that want to get involved with motorsport starting at the bottom and, and trying to get them involved building their own cars and going out and racing and the Army are, uh, 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 are very happy for me to do this and I'm lucky enough to get the odd Friday afternoon off and, uh, and get up here early. Here's the grid then for round three of the championship and it's the two Brands Hatch winners, Stuart Voice and Stephen Roberts, that line up on the front of the grid with David Drinkwater just behind them. Paul Henson, the reigning MR2 champion, lines up on the inside of the fifth row of the grid. Further back, you can see that Will Gibson, he went very strongly at Brands Hatch but only 17th on the grid here. And there's Farad Darva on the inside of the tenth row next to Neil Roach, who's had to put right a lot of accident damage from Brands Hatch. Running up only 25th is the double podium finisher from Brands Hatch, that's Colin Bysouth. And there you can see that Iggy Kwesi lines up 36th on the grid, the man from Essex. With a five second penalty applied to his qualifying time, Owen Hunter is down in 39th on the grid. Well, I have to say it's a good job that we're using the full 2.99 mile 300 circuit at Snetton. Otherwise, we wouldn't have fitted all 41 cars on the grid. The red lights go on, and they go. Now one driver to start from the pit lane. But this big field of cars making their way past us now as they head up towards Witch's Corner. For the first time, it looks like Stuart Voice on pole position has made a decent start, but so too is Stephen Roberts on the outside of the front row. Oh, and there's a problem there. That's Mark Gazard very sideways. And contact with Tim Gibson, who we were on board with. Another car has gone off as well. That's the number 20 machine of James Cook. But it looked like Mark Gazard, I think, had had a bit of a touch already as he collided with the car 
of Tim Gibson that we were on board with. Meanwhile, the rest of the field already up at Montreal Hairpin for the first time in what will be a 13 minute plus one lap race. I reckon we'll get about seven laps out of this with a lap time in qualifying taking the thick end of two and a half minutes. Race all ready over for Mark Gazard after only a couple of hundred yards. But look, there in the lead is Steve Roberts. So he did make a good start and went around the outside of Stuart Voice into Richie's corner for the first time. He leads them. Voice in second. In third place, it's Drinkwater. In fourth place, looks to be the car of Dave Mountain. Or would someone, possibly with a bit of assistance, heading off over the grass there on the way out of the left handed hairpin at Agostini. Down then to the left hand kink at. Hamilton, and that's caused a bit of a gap in the field. Here's a replay, and yes, we didn't see what happened to start that in the middle, but there was certainly contact into the right-hand side of Mark Gazzard's car. That puts him into the path of Tim Gibson. Poor James Cook had nowhere to go. Here's another view on board. This is with Neil Trotter. He lined up 26th on the grid. You can see he's dodging about there. Now, I think that's Colin by south there that's just coming past us in the number 11 car driver that should be much further up the grid really he makes up a lot of places down the inside but all of the action you could just see unfolding on the left hand side of the circuit there into the ridges gravel trap and on this short straight up towards the Montreal hairpin we get a different view here from on board with Farad Darva who started 19th of course and yes it's all a little bit closer to Farad lots of smoke and Farad doing well there to keep out of that on board with Martin Gambling then, former low-cost race winner in his number 99 car. Not quite sure what those hand signals mean, but he is going alongside now the number 25 car, the Rising Sun Racing prepared machine of Paul Henson. Meanwhile, the leaders, the first three cars, have made a bit of a break. I think that incident of Agostini has split the pack somewhat on this first lap of the race. So it's Steve Roberts that leads as we go back on board now with Bill Trotter. More smoke, cars careering over the curbs at uh, Brundle and Nelson there, Nelson the right hand up, heading now down towards the bomb hole for the first one, that familiar dip in the circuit, and while Steve Roberts comes through with a comfortable lead at the end of lap one, I say he has a comfortable lead, the top three cars have a comfortable lead over the rest of the field, headed by Dave Mountain in fourth place, it looks like it's uh, Warren Gazard there in fifth, and there's that 99 car, the silver machine of, Warren, uh, of Martin Gambling, he is in seventh position at the moment. See, some of the drivers have the black cross on the yellow background. That indicates they are a novice driver, still in their first few circuit races. Coming off the left hander at Palmer, then, and down towards Agostini for the second time. It is still Steve Roberts that's leading. Stuart Voice there in second place. But just making a bit of a break now from David Drinkwater, who missed the first round of the championship with clutch issues from qualifying. He was out for race two, though, and he was certainly good value there as the 84 car that's Scott Lawson who started right towards the back of the field he has had a bit of a moment back with the lead as we go through Brundle and Nelson then for the second time and there's still not a great deal to choose between them David Drinkwater in that number 67 car is in third place he got back to fourth in the second race at Brands Hatch having run through the gravel trap at Clearways at the end of lap number one there Steve Roberts the former Northwest Formula 4 1600 champion nine years ago now. All went and off there. That looks like it's the number 37 car of Jim Carolan. I'm trying to work out where that is. I think that could be the run out of Palmer. I'm not quite sure how he's got himself into that position, in all honesty. There's a bit of a moment for the number 57 machine. That's Will Gibson. And he has right behind him the number 40 car, which is Warren Gazard. He has lost some ground, it seems to me was up there in a strong position at the end of lap one but I think he has had a moment so the field across the line once more as the leaders already up towards Montreal for the third time and look how Stuart Voice is within a car length of Steve Roberts you'll notice that Stuart Voice has the uh, spoiler the wing on the back of his car Steve Roberts does not as they go into this yellow flag zone for the Jim Carolan machine that's stranded and drivers do have the choice of whether to run with that particular device or not. It doesn't seem to make a great deal of difference to the performance of the cars. There's the number 88 car of Shonny Patterson. I think it was Shonny that started from the pit lane, so having some ground to make up. His qualifying position would have put him on the 15th row of the grid. 
as the leaders look really close now as they come out of Agostini. A much better exit from that hairpin made by Stuart Foy. So he's piling the pressure on now as they go through the left hander at Hamilton. Bit of dust being kicked up there by Stephen Roberts as they now make their way down to the right hander at Oggies. And then this short straight back up towards Williams once more. And that's the corner that brings them back out onto the Bentley Strait, formerly known as the Reverend Strait. One of the great features of this Smithson layout that has been preserved. And that's the number 10 car, which is uh, Scott Carruthers and someone going wide there. And it's the number 16 machine of Renus Zaleski that has a bit of a moment, loses a few places, but gathers it all in. So a little bit of lost ground there for Zaleski. Now, Oggies. There's that number 20 car of James Cook. Now, he had that moment, of course, getting caught up in the first corner incident. He started 18th on the grid, lost a lot of places, but he's gradually clawing his way back through the field. Well, still the leaders right together. 21, Stuart Voice in second position. 56, Stephen Roberts, the familiar number that he's run all through his career in the lead of this race. And it's good to see the number of drivers that have come into the Marangoni Gas Shocks compact cut from different arenas. Whether they're racing in different kinds of BMWs, as some have done. The MR2 Championship, low cost, Sax Max, Formula Ford in the case of Stephen Roberts. And now here's Neil Trotter on board with him. He's in the number 12 car. In the midfield, gets all crossed up there. Actually, seems to gain a place out of all of that as they head down the straight towards the left-hander at Palmer. No, he doesn't in actual fact. He's running side by side with the other car, which was the sixth car of Alex Dew. And actually, it's a decent race, this, because Neil Trotter, uh, I think, started 26th on the grid, now up into the top 10 places. So he's had a strong start to this race. I think he may have profited possibly more than most by all the first lap shenanigans. Now Stuart Voice has a really good run on Steve Roberts here. This is for the lead of the race, of course. There's less than a car length between them now as they head down this short straight. But let's go back to this battle. There's Neil Trotter, Alex Dew and Warren Gazard there as well. Who else is getting involved? That's the number 33 car, which is Chris Etheridge. This is all happening towards the bottom end of the top ten. Lots of shuffling of the places. Alex Dew in the number six car. The driver from Oxford. Former Clear Cup racer and Stock Hatch front runner as well in the past. There's the number 61 car going through, which is Matthew Warren. 35-year-old from Hagley, near Stourbridge, an MOT test of a mechanic by occupation. Through the bomb hole goes this battle with Etheridge now having got the better of the surviving Gazard, which is Warren. Gazard now under attack though through Quorum, now a long uh, constant eight, uh, radius right-hander. Alex Stewart was piling the pressure on. He's, I don't think, going to be able to find a way through as they head up towards the left-hander at Murray's. The corner formerly known as Russell that's been somewhat emasculated these days. Dew gets a good run out of it though and it's a long straight that's ahead of them, the centre straight, and he might well be able to make a move at Riches, which lies at the end of that straight. And here's Trotter, now with Martin Gambling. So he's made up some places. Trotter in this number 12 car, on board with him now. Can he get a good run down this straight? And go past the... Tyrrell's cafeteria there on the right hand side now under braking for Agostini which is a left hand hairpin it was later on the brakes has he gone through and made up a position comes out fairly wide on the exit now it's possible he could have the switchback carried out on him there but it looks like he has got through now on the right hander goes Martin Gambling then He's now got Colin Bysouth on his tail, who's had a really good run up the order, bearing in mind he qualified only 25th. I think he must have had some problems in qualifying. Oh, someone going off there, and that's Paul Hinson. Well, he really has been in the wars during the course of this race. MR2 champion must feel like he's got a target painted on the side of his car. 
Leaders, though, have had a good clean scrap. They've edged away from the third place man, which is David Drinkwater. Through Brundle Nelson goes this particular battle, which has got Will Gibson at the head of it. It's also got Martin Gambling involved and Colin Bysouth as well. And this is a battle up in the top six now and it's gambling there that's looking to make a move on Gibson does he go through Gibson runs out wide at quorum and he loses two places because by south can go through as well but Gibson fights back on the inside line at Murray's he's got his car there on the inside and he does go through so Gibson there in the number 57 car it was a double top 10 finisher at Brands Hatchy gets the move done once again on Colin Bysouth who was a double podium finisher of course Bysouth now coming to the left hand side of the circuit which is that opportunity along the outside line as they go past the stricken Mark Gazard machine you'll see Will Gibson is one of those drivers with a novice cross on the side of his car he's going to protect the inside line though for the right hander at Montreal the hairpin they loop back round and run parallel to the stroke they've just beat up and then down to the left-hander at Palmer as problems there for 52 which is Tim Gibson who was in the wars on the first lap it looks rather like he might have had some more contact now there's Simon Roach who has lost a wheel now whether that's connected to the car that we've just seen I know not but Simon Roach has had a pretty rotten start to the season in the number 65 car as a DNF and a 12th place finish at Brands Hatch it's going to be a second non-finish in three races this season the leaders now on to their final lap and still very little to choose between Stephen Roberts and Stuart Voice. They have been right together. What's been noticeable though is that out of the slower corners, Stuart Voice has been pretty mighty and Stephen Voice has not been so good. And that's another slow corner they've just been through at Montreal. Can Stuart Voice get alongside now as they go to the left hundred Palmer, which is not really a great overtaking opportunity and he tucks back in behind the white car there but now they've got another short straight which takes them up towards Agostini and it looks like Voice is trying to get alongside there and take the inside line for the left hand no he tucks back in behind but he knows he's been getting a good exit from this corner all the way through this race can he do it again Stephen Roberts will know that what can he do to defend he's going to try and move across but he's pretty powerless to do so on the exit of the corner they head through the left hander at Hamilton now and Stuart Voice has oh, not quite got his car alongside it was deceptive from the angle we were looking at there I thought that Stuart Voice was going to make a move but now he's going to try around the outside going into Oggies which is never going to work surely and indeed it doesn't so chance is running out for Stuart Voice now but he's now planting his car on the inside line for Williams just locks up a little bit there as he realises he might need to back out of that to avoid some contact with Stephen Roberts now they head down the Bentley straight with a big toe able to be created can Stuart Voice make the most of that well, still battles going on all the way down the order that's the 77 car there which is Cliff Ransley and he has got just behind him the 84 car of Scott Lawson they're having their own little battle well through Nelson they now come and it looks like Stephen Roberts has managed to protect his lead at the end of the Bentley straight so he still leads Stuart Voice is second heading now through the bomb hole so just a couple of corners to go they've got Quorum the long right hand up then the left hander at Murray's and then it's going to be all about the sprint to the line Stuart Voice still putting the pressure on with that Union Jack livery on the side of his car patriotic man and he's certainly not giving up here is he riding the curbs through Murray's it's not cost him any time I don't think but now it's all about getting your foot flat to the floor and Stephen Roberts seems to have done that a little bit more effectively than Stuart Voice the chequered flag is waiting and it's a second victory of the year for Stephen Roberts it's a first defeat for Stuart Voice who was a double winner at Brands Hatch last time out in number 21 but today it's Stephen Roberts that has had the upper hand and there is David Drinkwater in third so just half a second between Stephen Roberts and Stuart Voice at the end of this race David Drinkwater fading a little bit in third position Dave Mountain was fourth on the road but penalised for contact that promoted Martin Gambling Mountain fifth and a great drive from Colin Boyce out to sixth position Stephen Roberts, race winner here for the first BMW Compact Cup race. That was a great defensive drive from yourself there to hold off Stuart Voice. Yeah, um, Stuart drove really, really well. Uh, it's probably one of the hardest races I've had to, and actually actually won it. You know, I, uh, 
I was defending a lot and I think that slowed the two of us up and I take my hat off to Stu, he, he drove very cleanly, uh, I tested his patience quite a bit because um, I was driving very defensively but that's what you got to do to win some races and I was determined to win that first one. Um, second one we're going to be going out to do the same thing. Big compact cup grid as always with the BMWs and it's good that you can all race very cleanly. Yeah uh, and fantastic we can get on one grid as well because the group system at Brands was it, you know it, it's it's a necessity but you know it's nice to have a have a big grid here all in one race and have two chances to race Stuart because uh, me and him uh, looks like it's going to be close this year. Well David Drinkwater third place there it was a pretty lonely race for you but overall it's a podium good stuff. Yeah, it's a really good race for me. Had a bit of disappointment at Brands with some failures on the clutch and a few other bits and pieces, but yeah, it was a good start today. Well, join us after the break for more Marangoni Gas Shocks Compact Cup Racing from Snetterton. Welcome back to the Snetterton 300 circuit for the second Marangoni Gas Shocks Compact Cup race of the day. We're going to have two non-starters, Mark Gazard after his damage in race one. David Rowe didn't actually make the start of the first race either. So 39 cars taking to the grid with on the front row. Stephen Robertson Stewart voice the second row, David Drinkwater and Martin Gambling. The third row, Dave Mountain and Colin by South as the Lights go out, the race gets underway and a good start there from Stephen Roberts from pole position. He made a great start from the outside of the front row early on. This time he starts from the inside of the circuit. It looks good for a lead as he goes down into Riches for the first time. Stuart Voice slots into second place. Dave Mountain there I think in third. Possibly Dave for Drinkwater losing out a little bit but we'll get a check on that in a moment. There goes the number nine car through, that's Gig Kwesi. The driver from Bishop Stortford. He's on board now. He's or with Neil Trotter, I should say, in that number 12 car. Had a good first race, but losing out there early doors. I think to Colin Bysouth in the number 11 car. Ooh, ooh, just a brief bit of contact there, I think, with Martin Gambling. Very busy first lap, this, for the Marangoni Gas Shots Compact Cup. This, of course, a new circuit to the majority of the drivers. Smoke coming from the back of somebody there. We'll pick up on that in a moment. Round Agostino, they go. Some dust now being kicked up as well. And it's side by side for the lead. It was Roberts that got the initial lead. Stuart Voice in second, but through the left hander at Hamilton. They're absolutely together. And now at Oggies, Voice trying to go around the outside. Does he make it into the lead? He does, but he runs wide, almost going over the dirt. And he actually loses another place because of that. Now, is that drink water that's gone through? Yes, it is drink water then in the 67 car that's gone up to second place. Dave Mountain in fourth, Martin Gambling is fifth, Colin Bysouth is sixth. Looks like a place has been lost there by Neil Trotter because I think that's Kevin Denwood that has gone through in the number 55 machine. Kevin Denwood who started the race 12th on the grid. Back on board with Trotter now. Down the Bentley straight. He's about to go under the bridge as the lead is already turning into Brundle, the left-hander. So a different shape to the race this time because David Drinkwater with that mistake there by Stuart Voice getting through into second place. Now can he take the fight to Steve Roberts at the start of this race? On board with Drinkwater then in the number 67 car and you can see that he's got some data there. You can see the speed he's doing around Corum. Around about 80 miles an hour there. And then breaks for the left-hander at Murray's. And now it's foot flat to the floor as they climb their way through the gears again along the centre straight over the start and finish line to start the second lap. Then they'll head down towards Riches. Again, it's a 13 minute plus one lap race. Stuart Voice just having a brief look down the inside of David Drinkwater, but as yet unable to do anything about them. And the three of them have made a bit of a break over the rest of the field. Dave Mountain in fourth and Martin Gambling in fifth position. Down towards Montreal, Stuart Voice thinks about uh, a move down the inside, under braking for the hairpin, but decides better of it. He stays in third position for the moment. Roberts just pulling away a few car lengths as they move their way down to Parma. Oh, and it's not been a good day for the Gazards, has it? Because on the first lap of race one, we lost Mark Gazard. At the beginning of race two, we lose Warren Gazard. Possibly some damage picked up on the first lap there. Down to Agostini, go the leaders. Now, Steve Roberts seems slow, as he said to us, out of the slower corners all the way through the first race. That possibly gives David Drinkwater a chance to close up on him, or Drinkwater not too far behind here. 
we'll see if Roberts can pull away around the rest of the lap so that parts of the circuit here being the likes of uh, Montreal and Agostini and then it's quite a hard break the sharp left hander at Murray's as well further around the lap so these three cars making a break Did possibly notice we lost Martin gambling from fourth position there in the background we'll pick up on that in a moment Here's Tim Gibson then in the number 52 car. Well, he had well and truly been in the wars in race one. There he is. He's just ahead of the number 95 car. That's Dean Blackbird, the Bradford driver. Along the straight they go. It's a long old run to the bridge before the left hander at Brundle. On the brakes now. Is this a chance for a move? Around the outside, well it is. Now can he get the car turned into Nelson? That's the trick, he'll run out a bit wide on the exit of the corner. But Tim Gibson has made up a place there. It's a good, strong start to the race that he's having. There's the 13 car of Farad Darva. Making his way down towards Quorum. Door being left open there for the 65 car which is Simon Roach who's back out again got four wheels back on his wagon with some ground to make up because the grid for race two set by the finishing order from race one and Roach along with Carolan Gazard and Owen Hunter were non finishes in the earlier race and here it is side by side for second place and Stuart Voice goes through so David Drinkwater's tenancy in second position is relatively short lived Try and get the place back in shore, but Palmer is not the place to do it. Agostini is the next overtaking attempt. A relatively new configuration, this 300 layer. A few drivers saying it would have been a better track had it been a bit wider. Or drink water trying to find a way down the inside! And he's out of shape, and he's touched the back of Stuart Voice's car. He's spun around and he's lost several positions because of that. Well, it just seemed to me that under braking he'd already lost it before he just slightly tagged the back of Stuart Voice's car. This is the view from outside. He's under braking. Yes, he had lost it. Under braking, it just flipped the car around, tagged Stuart Voice ever so lightly. It didn't really delay Stuart Voice too much, but it's just enough to initiate the spin. So David Drinkwater now with some work to do. Keeping like that second race at Brands Hatch all over again for him. And there he is, pushing on now. He's ahead of the number 57 car of Will Gibson, but just outside the top six at the moment. And the great thing about the Marangoni Gas Shocks Compact Cup is that there are, are battles to be had all the way down the order. With the thick end of 40 cars out on track, you'll do well not to be in a battle, really. And half a dozen drivers certainly enjoying their scraps there. As they make their way around we can see that Scott Carruthers is involved in that also uh, Mark Chang in the number 88 car as well it was a regular last season good to see him out here this weekend in the four car as well that's Clint Bardwell who we've seen racing Master MX-5s in the past he had two top ten finishes at Brands Hatch so he'll be pretty pleased with how things have gone so far this year it's Chang you can see in the sort of burgundy coloured car behind all of that there's the 50 car of Gregory Barlow the 13 car of Feroz Darva as well side by side action here as well the sunshine glinting off the bonnets of these BMW E36 compact 318 TIs and that's Neil Trotter embroiled in a battle further down the order you can see Paul Hinson, I think, making his way through as well. And it's Kevin Denwood, isn't it, in the orange and blue car that Neil Trotter is scrapping with. Meanwhile, here are the leaders, and Stuart Voice has latched himself onto the back of Steve Roberts. They've got a big lead now over David Mountain in third position after the demise, or well, slight demise, of David Drinkwater, who dropped back down the order with that spinner Agostini. Down to Quorum they go. And into Morris, which is not the best overtaking opportunity. It's not such an over overtaking opportunity as the old Russell chicane was, unfortunately. But these changes, part of the redesign by Jonathan Palmer three years ago. It's given a good run here, though, to Stuart Voice. Morris that time. And 
a spin there. That's 37 Jim Carolan, who I don't think has yet finished a race. He's now facing in the wrong direction. He swivels round. And meanwhile, it's side by side for the lead. Is Stuart Voice going to get this done? That great run out of Murray's comes to nothing because he slots back in behind Stephen Roberts into Riches. But I'm sure another attempt will present itself before too much longer. Down towards Montreal Hairpin they go. Meanwhile, side by side further back. Looks like uh, Paul Hinson possibly involved in that. Maybe Alex Tew as well. And the 66 car also involved is Bryce Greenwood in the lateral entered car. And it's a great scrap for three or four cars there in actual fact. And again, this is just outside, or to the back end of the top ten at the moment. On board with once more with Neil Trotter, he's just ahead of these cars, battling as he has been with Kevin Denwood, but now it's a different car that... That is he's still Kevin Denwood, isn't it? Very confusing. Different livery on the front and the back of that car. He's going to get alongside now. Going to try and make a move down the inside here. Does that work? like it might have done in actual fact yeah I think it has I think Neil Trotter has made a move there on Kevin Denwood that will put him up into I think 7th position now Denwood down to 8th so like Will Gibson is ninth, and then there's that scrap with Alex Jew, Bryce Greenwood et al for 10th place and here it is and it looks like Paul Hinton's going to come out to the front of that just at the moment ahead of the 33 car of Chris Etheridge who's also involved as well look at this absolutely fantastic racing all the way around the lap now David Drinkwater is busily trying to make up some ground once more and it's Martin Gambling there down the inside of Colin by South Gambling gets the back out they will drive cars of course these they both well both of the two cars ahead there get a little bit out of shape through Brundtland Nelson and I thought that might give an opportunity for David Drinkwash, but in the end he just had to sort of stop up behind them to avoid an, an instant. And has lost a few car lengths, if anything. Right, back to this fantastic fight that's raging on. So it's Alex Tew, Paul Hinson, Chris Etheridge and the 66 car of Bryce Greenwood as well. Many of the drivers facing favouring dark coloured cars, which I guess is the uh, colour of the base car that they've built their machines up from. Not too easy for commentators, I'm afraid. Number 52 is Tim Gibson, though. We're on board with him. Brakes being locked ahead. Didn't see who that was by. Those two cars went wide at Montreal that time. And Tim Gibson was able to profit there. Well, he's somewhere in the mid teens. Iggy Quasi in the number nine car was one of those that's had a moment. The owner of Zen Sport Performance enjoys off roading in his spare time. And, well, that was a perfect example, I guess. The leaders at Murray's once more, and Stuart Voice not as close this time to Stephen Roberts. So even if he gets a good one out of the corner, I'm not sure it will do him much good up the centre straight this time because he's about three car lengths back as they pass the pit garages. And that's the last slap board that you can see there being displayed by the marshal on the pit wall. So another 2.99 miles between Stephen Roberts and a second victory of the weekend, a third victory of the season. But Stuart Voice, the double brands hatch went up won't want to leave Norfolk without a victory to his name to take back to Billericay around the hairpin they've gone for the final time so with every corner that passes the overtaking opportunities are running out for Stuart Voice and he's not particularly close to Stephen Roberts this time going through Palmer either well it's now Paul Hinson that's shaken himself out to the front but look at the damage on his car isn't there a straight panel left on his machine there's Alex Dew, whose car looks in slightly better nick. As I said earlier on, though, Paul Hinson really has been a bit of a target this weekend. Now, through Agostini, Stuart Voice has taken a length or so out of Steve Robinson. We know he gets a good run out of this corner. He's going to go to the outside line for the left-hander at Hamilton. The two of them overlapping. That would actually have given him a decent line for Oggies if he could have stuck with it, but he talks back in behind Stephen Roberts now. So it's 56 car that leads, 21 car in second place as they go around Oggies, which is a sort of two-part right-hand corner. Then there's this straight up towards the sweeping right-hander at Williams that brings them back onto the Bentley straight, which they'll do now for the final time. So they're more than halfway around this final lap. My word, I don't think it can watch as this group of cars on the last lap heads into Agostini. And the order constantly changing in these battles down the order again someone going wide all over the grass do they keep it out of the barrier they just about managed to do so there 
as the lead is now heading towards the bomb hole and it is still Stephen Roberts that prevails so it looks like he's going to take his second victory of the weekend but as they go into the bomb hole Stuart Voice shows the nose once again and Roberts knows that he has a fight on his hands here down towards Cobb for the final time and you sense now that it's all going to be about this drag to the finish line it's the only way that Stuart Voice is going to be able to find a way through but I think Roberts will just about be able to hold him off in tomorrow as they go for the final time then past the spectator grandstand and here we go then, foot to the floor, oh and it is a good exit this time from Stuart Voice and maybe I spoke too soon, maybe Stuart Voice is going to pinch it up to the line there side by side, check and flag goes out and look by the thickness of a coat of paint it's Stuart Voice who's not led at all during this race that comes through to take victory from Stephen Roberts who is going to be absolutely distraught I should think you want more shenanigans down in the bomb hole on the final lap as the 20 car of James Cook who's running I think in 20th position at the moment he had that off at the first corner of the first race here's this fight and this is for the last place in the top 10 Bryce Greenwood is going to get up alongside Alex Jew but is it going to work for him and the answer is no not quite because he loses out by seven one hundredths of a second so not too much to choose between those two cars battling for 10th place these are the results of race two then Stuart Voice beating Stephen Roberts by eight one hundredths of a second Dave Mountain holding on to third place this uh, this time Colin Bysouth a great weekend for him after a disappointing qualifying he got back to fourth ahead of David Drinkwater and Martin Gamblin with race victor Stuart Voice Stuart you put a lot of pressure on that in that race to Stephen Roberts and it all paid off towards the end yeah it did I had, I had a bad uh, couple of first laps so I went down to third but we managed to pull it together and then push for the win and then managed to pay it off in the last lap really pushed hard and yeah just really we're really well really Stephen Roberts another man who's taken a second and a first away from the weekend uh, how are you feeling on that um, on paper happy with it uh, just the manner I lost that last race it's uh, a little bit difficult to take at the moment but um, hard to lose it in the last hundred yards but you know held them off as long as I could and we were the traction we just getting you know we, we were struggling just out the slow corners we're great through the fast stuff but struggling out the slow stuff so and unfortunately on the run to the line is a very slow corner before the start finish straight so happy enough with the weekend but one wins so that's what we'll be going for next time out. David well done on third place this time round race one wasn't too bad race two gets a lot better. Yeah no, it's very good I mean realistically as I keep saying you've got the young hot shoes out the front and I'm First to the over 50, so I'm happy with that and very thankful to my crew, uh, Simon and uh, my two uh, step-granddaughters here today helping, so Maddie and Frankie, so really, really good. Well, it's shaping up to be a fantastic season in the Marangoni Gashox Compact Cup. Stuart Voice has just a five-point advantage over Stephen Roberts after the first four rounds. A heroic performance by Colin Blystaff keeps him in contention in third place. Dave Mountain fourth, Neil Trotter and Alex Jew completing the top six. Join us next time at Donington Park.